Okay, so now we've got a model of a car that's roughly 3,000 polys or triangles. And we've got all the shapes, I mean, that, uh, that we're going to do for, for this demo uh, carved out and modeled. You'll see that uh, this spoiler is still a separate piece, but that's okay. The wheels are still separate. Um, so what we're going to talk about in this video is the UV process. So when I say UVs, what I'm really referring to is uh, if I bring up my editor here, this is called the UV editor. And in the modeling menu, you have an entire uh, panel here dedicated to UVing. Um, so the UV editor is where you're going to be spending a lot of your time now that you have a model done. And if you've never done anything with 3D, um, I could just sort of explain very basically what the UV space is. So the UV space, if I have, say, this one, one object selected, and I pull it out, and you can see that nothing is changing when I change the model here in the object mode. But if I switch to uh, component mode and I start selecting faces, you can see that I actually uh, have a manipulator appear and a, uh, a highlight, uh, an outline of the face that I'm selecting in my UV space. So. Uh, what it's telling me is that these faces uh, are correlating. Basically, they each one of the individual faces correlates to a space, a face in the UV space. And the UV space, if I switch to my UV editor and I grab that same face one by one, by one I grab what are called the UVs, which are the points that. Uh, align to the vertices of the face, but actually represent the, pulling it out, you can see that it represents the uh, sort of the skin, skinning information where the, once the object has a texture applied to it, which is a flat image, uh, that image aligns to this sort of uh, flat orthographic space and it's in a one-to-one uh, -one grid. So your default Maya system uses this upper right quadrant of the UV editor for laying out your UVs, whereas the other three quadrants really just represent workspace. So you can separate everything and lay things out. And so if I were to want to recreate the look of this wheel in my UV editor by manipulating the UVs one by one, well, I'd have a really hard time. I'd have stuff that I'd have to take care of. I, I could you know, grab the center one, and, and if I hit shift greater than, it, it grabs the neighboring UVs, and I could scale it in and then move that out of the way. And that, that represents, obviously, the center wheel here. But I still have a problem in that the way that the cylinder that was used to create the wheel uh, was created with these sort of default uh, flattened UVs. Uh, every time you make an extrusion or add resolution to geometry, you run the risk of, of, of having UVs that you're going to have to deal with later. So what I could do is I can do what's called uh, UV mapping. And what that means is I can select, you saw that I went to uh, select these UVs in the face uh, component mode. So if I select all those faces, and look Look at looking here. You can see that I'm missing a couple that are right here. So if I grab those faces, okay, 
and then I'll go up to my UV planner mapping, and I'll open up the options box. All right, so what this is going to do, it's going to lay the UVs out along whichever axis I choose. So I can, I can do a uh, best plane option, which would automatically, uh, Maya would factor in that I've got faces that are all along the x-axis, going down the x-axis, you can see down here, um, and that would be fine. Or I could just pick bounding box and x-axis, which I will do. I don't want to create a new UV set. I want to just, I just need one set of UVs for this car, um, and particularly we're just dealing with a separate object in the wheel. So if I go ahead and click apply, watch what happens. Okay, so you can see, actually what I'm going to do is do shade UVs. Okay, so that actually is easier to read on the screen. But um, over here, you've got this, this is what it was referring to when it mentioned bounding box. This gray targeting reticle. Um, but you can see here, all right, I can... Now I can go ahead and move this. I'm not actually moving faces, but rather I'm using moving UVs in face mode. And I can just move it out of the way. And if I go to, if I hold down control, right click, and I go to two UVs, see now it's selecting UVs. And I can't m move or change UVs in the 3D viewport, but I can, however, do that in my UV texture editor. So I could scale this down and now uh, if I determine that you know I want to keep these sort of out of the way of each other because in my reference you know this will have its own texture the wheel and the uh, tire part will have a different looking texture I can now move this away and sort of paint underneath on uh, on a flat surface in program like Photoshop. I can paint, you know, or use PhotoSource to come up with uh, a, a representational texture. So what we're left with is another row here, and that's probably going to cover the inside as well. So... I could tell that if I just select these faces and then I switch that to UV mode, you can see if I scale it, I've got, you know, what I would do probably is just take those faces and do a, another map, but this time I'm going to do a cylindrical map and not creating a new UV set, and that's fine. We're gonna do the pro projection before the deformer, which I'll show you. So now we're, our bounding box is cylindrical, and that's not necessarily the result we were hoping for. However, before you exit this tool, you can go ahead and click on this little T here, and that will uh, center the manipulator to the center of the uh, cylinder bounding box. And now if I click on the rotate, uh, um, rotate selector, uh, and it switches to rotation, I can now sort of rotate my, oh, I want to rotate in this mode. Now you see what's happening? As I rotate along the uh, z-axis, and I am rotating it out, you see that my uh, tire tread portion of my model uh, has actually uh, laid out flat and sort of looks properly unwrapped there. Um, so what, again, if I'll just undo this, I went ahead and I did a UV cylindrical map. I got this tool, 
which shows which direction the Maya chooses to map cylindrically. Uh, well, it doesn't look right, so I click on the, uh, the little T bar here, and I can now go ahead and select. That, that allows me to select from the center of the object the different, I could choose to scale, you know, or I could choose to move, and moving is not what I want. But I, rotating is what we want because we know that uh, we, we want the curvature here to uh, line up with uh, the sort of uh, wheel shape texture. So we go ahead and grab the appropriate axis here, which in this case is the Z because the Z uh, if I rotate it 90 degrees, now you can see that the uh, the tool cups the wheel, kind of in sort of matches the position. So it's a very uh, maybe strange foreign concept to get used to, but this is the uh, the way that uh, CG models get unwrapped. Um, manually and there are tools out there that cut this time down in fact I can uh, I can go in and show you that uh, there is if I move that out of the way so basically the final stage would be just to do another projection on the x-axis here in planner mode and now we would be done and ready to move on to the more complicated stuff, uh, which you can uh, imagine is sort of the car itself. But uh, another way to map things is in the um, in the editor uh, tool under UV editors. You can actually do an automatic map, and you can see that. It creates similar layout uh, that that would uh, you know be a good way to start. You can see that it's a little little uh, not not round, more sort of oblong shape, and then you've got edges here that uh, need to be uh, sewn up if you want uh, to have one long tire tread. You could choose to. Uh, stack UVs if it's going to uh, be sort of a repeating texture. Uh, that is, it's all sort of a matter of how much resolution you want to pack into your uh, your uh, 3D model. So um, that that was obviously a lot faster. So automatic mapping is sometimes the way to go. Um, I'll also show you here that automatic, automatic mapping can be a good way to get something like this uh, half of this car shell uh, figured out. So um, we'll go ahead and do that. We can see right away, first of all, this is the instance side, so I'm just going to delete it. And you can see that did a pretty decent job of kind of representing where we would actually tear our seams. You know, we wouldn't want to actually try to lay this model out completely. There's no reason to. We can actually, you know, grab this little row of faces maybe and connect those faces to the, the uh, bottom of the, of the vehicle. UVs here. So you can, there are tools in the editor here if I'll expand it. And I'm only going to sort of do a quick demonstration here because uh, I've got a tendency now, uh, it seems like the videos are getting longer than my original intention for them to be. So, uh, but I'll show you the quickly the cut. UV tool here, 
Um, so if you go to separate the UVs along selected edges, you can see that even though my UVs were selected, not the edges, you can see now if I go to select, I'll select the whole row that I separated and I'll go make them UVs and I will move them out. You can see that they're now separated and I want to align them here. So separating the UV does not, does not separate the vertices. So when I highlight an edge and you see the red highlight appear, it's showing you where these edges are sewn on the model and that now we can move this whole piece out. If I go to two shell and then I can grab the whole shell. I did UV and then right click, uh, oops, right click two shell. Now you can see that these edges here are much, they're, they're scaled way too big, so I need to scale it down. And what you do is you just kind of see, okay, well, those edges are now starting to line up pretty good. There's sort of a, a gap there, so I'll just move them up. And then when you've got everything in place, you can go down the row and select all the edges that neighbor or share an edge. And you can do this move and sew operation and watch what happens. So now we have, I'll do another sew there because it looks like the corner pieces aren't necessarily sewn together. There we go. So now that's a new uh, part added to that shell. And it looks like we have, you know, other edges that we could fix. Uh, but we could actually very quickly UV this whole guy. So um, I'm going to stop the video and let you go ahead and, and do the UVing. Um, in the next stage, we're going to actually assign a material and a texture uh, for reference so that we could see how the UVs look uh, once we've got some texture on the model. So I'll see you in the next one.